is a face, a pleasant human face, a face that has smiled at every minute of healthy life. It has never smiled at a girl, so he still has no wife. A mouth that has laughed at the ill and has mocked at their miseries. How he has survived those curses is still a big mystery. These eyes that have read books till they have gone weak. These glasses that now help him to still read like a freak. These hands of this doctor who treats people all day. A mind that thinks diseases are just another chapter. They'll never come my way. These ears that hear praises about his miraculous life-saving stories. The hair on his wig is also falling because of all his worries. Here he is, the man himself, at an international conference, awaiting an honor. For all the work he has done, he stands silently, waiting in the corner. This is not his first award. It's a collection amongst the others. But this one is special, as he is waiting for his mother. So that's all. This intro is good. We have wasted enough time. Let no one forget that this is not a mime. So let's give this tale a start. But wait a minute. Did you hear that fart? At the first minute, as soon as the release of the fart, the culprit usually stands still. He only lifts his head up a bit to act like all is normal. But when everyone else turns around their head to sound, he also turns his head to ensure that he looks innocent. At the second minute, as the pressure begins to build within his stomach, he lifts his head up to 45 degrees and coos in his discomfort. But when people look at him, he starts smiling at everyone so that he looks innocent and starts searching for a nearby toilet. At the third minute, he's wondering that he can't leave from here. He told his mother that he would meet her here. He looks up at God and prays to please help him get out of this awkward situation. But the pressure continues to build up. He just can't take it. He just grasps a lady by the arms standing next to her. But she thinks it's a sign of interest by this doctor and she smiles back. The doctor is now with mixed emotion. He starts to smile but all of a sudden he sees his mother. He recognizes her and his grasp disappears. But as soon as his mother comes, the lady next to him gets offended. She worries that why, why did he hold me like this? So she decides to walk away. He tries to stop her. He tries to catch her, throws his hands but overshoots. He tries to call her but the pressure is really building, he can't call. So he looks at his hand in dismay that why did this happen to him? At the fifth minute, he somehow tells his mother that go and sit down and wait for him as he might be called for the award at any minute. He looks around, he tries to walk but the pressure is so much that he can't move. He sits down on the chair, he supports it with both his hands and holds it but he's unable to release his grip because the pain is so much that now he's in agony. He doesn't lose hope. He decides that now he'll have to get on all fours, try to crawl and move close to the toilet. But as he sits, because of the pain, he falls down on the floor and he lies down on his back. He tries to get up, he tries to hold the chair with the Allah side of his hand and he tries to speak. He only says, ah, ooh. But then this irritating naughty kid comes there, imitates him, plays with his mirror image and runs away. At the seventh minute, he just can't take it anymore. He rolls back and tries to sit down. He sits down without support. And that's it. He's, he's got to go for it. He takes out a packet with one hand and he holds it from the radial side of his hand and then he takes it back and releases the objects of holding it. He releases all the contents into the packet and holds it out with one hand and transfers it from one hand to another. <laughs> Even though he's relieved, he's extremely anxious due to the smell that people around him might notice what he's been doing. So he's afraid about what the strangers will think. Now he's relieved that he's at least got rid of his load, but he continues to roll. 
and stays on the floor so that people do not notice him. But that is going to take a lot of time. So he decides to crawl. But in front there are too many people. So he crawls backwards and he starts murmuring that move, move, excuse, excuse in bisyllables so that he can go to the nearest dustbin. As he crawls backwards, there are too many people standing. He might, might not find his way out from there. So he starts to crawl forwards. He catches the packet with his two fingers, but not very firmly, and somehow recovers his balance as he tries to move forwards. As he stands up, he realizes people are noticing him. So he begins to creep on the floor. He doesn't want anyone to catch him. But all of a sudden, he bumps into someone. Oh, it's a worker taking the bin to throw out the trash. So he holds the packet firmly between his fingers. And after these 10 whole minutes of agony, he says his first meaningful word, thanks. Now relaxed that he's done with his load, he now stands up. And as he stands up, he looks for food, where he calls in a waiter. The waiter hands him a plate of dessert. He's thrilled by it, just as he is about to enjoy it. There's again something funny deep inside his tummy. But he still wants to eat. So with his trembling hands and the food spilling out from the spoon, he continues to eat. Now the pressure just begins to build up and builds up more inside him. Now this time he doesn't want to sit down after what he's faced. So now, he starts moving towards the toilet, side place, and quickly cruises amongst all these people. Until he reaches the toilet. He finally reaches the toilet, but someone is inside. He knocks, but no one opens. So he pivots around quickly. And he enters the adjacent and ladies toilet. He's hardly able to walk without support but he reaches the loo and he voluntarily releases his load at his request and trust me it was no simple ball game. So after he's flushed, after a few postural adjustments to dressing, it was all done and a doctor was relieved which he expressed by two or three meaningful words, thank you God. Now, relieved, he walks out of the toilet without any support. He's free and comfortable again. He calls the waiter, he asks for a drink, and he puts two ice cubes inside it. Fifteen minutes gone by, and with all this escapade, he slowly relaxes himself on a chair, and he sits to enjoy his dessert. And this time, without spilling any food, eating with a spoon. Then he realizes that he is going to be giving a speech in some time. So he revises it and uh, he might be called any minute. Suddenly, his name is announced. Now he starts getting tensed. He rushes through the pages, turning two to three pages at a time. And then he walks up the stage. Now, due to his unsettled last 15 minutes and the fear that the problem might arrive again, he quickly rumbles through his speech. I bet that the audience couldn't have gathered more than 10 to 15 meaningful words of his jargon speech. He quickly finishes it and finally the award is given to this doctor. The audience applauds and his mother is proud of him. And he comes down scribbling autographs with his only fan. minutes to this ordeal makes him realize all that his life he had studied aimlessly following everyone in the crowd and is now a successful doctor with all the knowledge he has but has he felt what a patient goes through or ever empathized with them having faced what he did today he realizes that has he ever done anything which was not work and studies did he ever have fun or did he ever do anything which he enjoyed he's just a lonely successful guy who has completed the race but knows not what to do Realizing this, he now wants to get things right. He aims to get that girl who smiled at him even though he sought her support in agony.
that's the only experience he ever had with any girl. So he walks sideways, tries to get out of this crowd and starts to run in search of his love. minutes since his bowel began to grumble, now he realizes the essence of life. If only he had felt this way earlier, he wouldn't have been so empty. But he doesn't find her. He walks back into the conference hall and he tries to search for her, but he sees her that she's not there. He then finds a staircase, which is right around the corner. He walks up, but then he gets tired because of all this walking. He drinks glass after glass of juice to gather energy to find her, puts, putting six to seven ice cubes per glass. He asks people and tries to describe her. For the first time, we see this doctor conversing more than 100 words about someone he doesn't even know. He gets a conference magazine to see if a photo is inside. He turns carefully every single page but doesn't find her. Now he draws a straight line in his mind. That from now on, he will try to be good at everything instead of narrowing down to one area of expertise and he'll find his girl of his life. 25 minutes later, he still can't find her. Having tiptoed everywhere, he's jumping on both his feet in frustration, but he's not gonna give up. hour later, that is 30 minutes later, he gets an idea. He thinks hard of her name, what color dress she was wearing and draws a circle of face on a paper along with the dress. As he climbs down the stairs, which is around the corner, he reaches the conference hall. At the conference hall, he shows it to everyone, so much that he's showing it to people left, right and center until he finally finds someone who recognizes her and tells him that she just left. If you rush, she might be outside. By the time he runs out seeing her go, he tries to look for an auto. He asks the auto driver whether he can chase her, but the driver asks for one and a half and refuses. He pushes the driver out and takes the tricycle auto all by himself. minutes later, that is 10 minutes after the chase, he finally reaches shitty square and there he sees this lady waiting. He climbs up courage one foot at a time and tries to talk to her and explains to her the full story of how he reached complete power control. Fifty minutes later, that is 10 minutes. Later, they have started to get friendly, improving hand-eye coordination and skipping all the misunderstandings between them. They drew a cross on their past and started a new love triangle. That is work, love and fun. Now, even if there are bladder control problems, no one can separate them. Are after the start of the story, that is 60 minutes into this shitty love story, they finally tie the knot on their shoelaces. And they get onto the bike and drive away, living happily ever after, with the dog glad that he learned his lesson. voluntarily agreed to be a part of this. They were not forced, tortured or paid and uh, they will not hold anyone responsible for any untoward consequences that occur on YouTube and the videos.